our next uh, paper is uh, a paper by Igor Pandik and Alvaro Lopez Rodriguez, and is entitled Democratizing Making Skills Enhancing Through Extended Realities. So thank you very much, uh, Igor uh, and Alvaro, uh, for attending today to present this very interesting paper. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Igor Pantic, and together with Alvaro Lopez, um, I will present our paper, Democratized Making Skills Enhancing Through Extended Realities. Uh, we will begin the presentation with a short clip by Australian futurist and author Brett King. Over the last 250 years, we've seen a lot of major disruptions as a result of technology. For the machine age, it was the steam engine and later the combustion engine, bringing on the end of the industrial age. For the atomic and space age, it was nuclear energy and taking men to the moon in these uh, massive rockets. The digital age was all about computers, electronics, and in the later stages, the internet. Is this encyclopedia or National Geographic? But the next stage, the augmented age, is going to be about you and I and the way we live our life. And over the next 15 to 20 years, Almost every aspect of the way we live our daily life is set to change. Uh, so we are entering the augmented age, uh, where the future workers will have their skills and capabilities augmented through technology in two major ways. One would be the hardware, uh, which will consist of mechanical devices which the human will attach to their body, uh, such as mechanical exoskeletons, which would increase the strength and performance of the individual. Um, and the second set would be the augmentation devices. Of augmentation devices would be the sensorial devices or the extended reality devices. Um, it is predicted that these augmented reality devices will become mainstream media for enhancing the capabilities of future workers. Recent trend has seen constant drop in prices and increasing accessibility of CAD-mounted XR devices. So XR or extended reality is basically an umbrella term which covers virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, and other immersive technologies uh, being different based on kind of um, ways how you immerse yourself and interact with the environment. And the application of these technologies can already be seen in past five years in artistic and design fields. Um, and, and the use of these te technologies allows us to go beyond the constraints of 2D displays and immerse ourselves into fully uh, interactive full-scale models throughout the design process. Development of extended realities hardware has um, kind of a 50 years history already. One of the earliest known examples of this technology was Sensorama, which was introduced in 1962 by Morton Haling, uh, and it is considered one of the earliest virtual reality systems. In 1968, even Sutherland created the first head-mounted display called the Sword of Democritus, which paved the way for the AR devices which we use today. Next. Uh, today, we all have access to augmented reality through our smartphones or commercially available devices such as new Google AR glasses and Microsoft HoloLens, uh, which is slowly finding its way into multiple industries as aid in manufacturing or visualization of data. Traditionally, architecture is, as a field is essentially very slow in adapting cutting edge technologies. Despite the early examples of uh, use of different AR uh, techniques have, have been made in the last 20 years within the research environment, only very few have found its commercial application. The earliest professional application of this type of technology is related to conservation and restoration of heritage buildings, uh, which can be seen in a project like Archeo guide, which shows the potential of overlapping digital information over the real world environments. Similar approach can be found in um, next. Yeah. So similar approach can be found in what is probably the first professional example of commercial application of AR, uh, which was a Trimble navigation. Uh, so basically what this project allowed was uh, for the potential buyers of a house to explore and interact with the 3D model of the house 
prior to the construction. Um, and kind of due to a very successful result in a way, this concept started a new trend that is now almost kind of mainstream. Okay, but so what? So uh, what can this mean for the architects and the way in which we design and build? Previous examples are primarily using AR as a pure visualization tool, right? Um, however, we see that the true potential of AR and um, other immersive technology in architecture lies in its use in the processes of design and manufacturing. And with this in mind, we can classify the application of AR in architecture into three main subjects. Um, one would be visualization and, and visual immersion where CAD mounted devices are used to display design uh, and objects in augmented or virtual reality. AR assisted fabrication where um, devices are used to display manufacturing data to the user and fabricators can follow holographic guides in process of fabrication and assembly essentially kind of eliminating the need for construction drawings. And finally, AR assisted design, where designers are able to interact, uh, interact with and change the existing designs or create digital models in real time in immersive environments. So um, in this paper and presentation, we are mostly focusing on the second aspect, which is the AR assisted fabrication. Over the past decade, we are witnessing rapid advancements on both practical and theoretical levels in regards to automated construction and, and as a consequence of increasing sophistication of digital fabrication technologies such as robotic fabrication, large scale robotic 3D printing and so on. Um, this emerging trajectory within digital design research focused on automation and robotics attempts to give architects an unprecedented level of precision and control over materialization of their designs. However, the very distinctive nuances and subtleties of traditional craft practice are absent uh, from these artifacts of robotic production, as the intuition and understanding of the qualitative aspects of project are very difficult to describe in a, a explicit language of machines. So, could the augmented reality technologies play a role in this equation and, and sort of bridge the gap between material-based processes and automation? Rather than it being a question of man versus the machine, where machines are seen superior in terms of precision, becoming one of a man and machine in a collaborative process. Or essentially man as machine, where through augmented reality devices, humans now have the access to data and information which was previously exclusive only to the machines. What we see here on the screen is a test of holographic bricklaying by, by Fogram and um, students at RMIT, uh, which indeed asks the question, do we need um, expensive robots for complex bricklaying if a human who is experienced or not can now see precise instructions for creation of the complex geometries? One of the earlier examples of use of augmentation in a wider sense in construction can be found in Toka Pavilion de developed by uh, Obuchi Lab at University of Tokyo in 2015. Um, and the manufacturing of this process is focused on several ways of um, augmentation, uh, both in terms of hardware and software. <clears throat> So uh, regarding the hardware, the project uses two technologies. Firstly, it, um, it's used as a main tool for fabrication, um, which is a bespoke device which connects the human and deploys the foam uh, used for the construction. Um, and the second one is based on computer vision, uh, where through QR codes, the computer is able to read and analyze uh, the deployed foam and follow the building process. Uh, the software augmentation side consists of a kind of a primitive version of machine learning, which reads these uh, QR code markers and readapts and recalculates the design according to the human error. Next. So although no aug augmented reality itself was used for this project, it does show how augmentation has the potential to change the traditional uh, building practices. A more recent example um, 
would be the steampunk pavilion built for Tallinn Architecture Biennale in 2019, um, designed by William Yan, Cameron Newham, Sumingham, and myself. Um, for the competition, which essentially historically has been interested in engaging with local timber industry in Estonia. Uh, and with that premise, steampunk combines the traditional craft of steam bending timber with high-tech holographic design and construction. So steam bending itself is a, is a very old existing craft method. And traditionally, steam bending requires expensive one or two part molds to produce precise parts. And molds for non-planar parts become very complex and, and expensive. Next. So to overcome this, we prototyped an adaptable formwork system for double curved timber strips using a holographic guide generated in real time from digital models. Um, so the process itself would go as follows. Basically, each board is placed in a bag, which would act as a steaming chamber, um, which allowed us uh, to increase the working time um, up to five minutes of bending and reducing the chain chance of, of breakage during the bending process. Um, and we eliminated the need to design and fabricate any kinds of precise molds and instead allowed formwork to be assembled essentially on the fly using cheap scrap timber, which was set out uh, using the holographic model of a timber strip as essentially the only design information, uh, if, uh, fabrication information as you can see on the, on the video. So this had the effect of essentially distributing skills because anyone can now participate in the fabrication process regardless of their previous experience. Um, they could see the required shape or part. Anyone can lay the formwork or guide during bending and identify mistakes and so on. Um, likewise, um, the, the same process was used for uh, fabrication of, of um, metal strips, which you saw in the video earlier, where a holographic interface allows fabricators to select parts um, and, uh, and position them on analog bar band. Um, next. So the holographic models here enabled us to completely eliminate any kind of 2D drawings from the design and construction process. Um, essentially, the ability for anyone to view a holographic model of the finished state of the construction at any time allowed for these handmade flimsy flexible parts to be reliably installed without the need of expensive templates, 3D scans, uh, time consuming measurements, and just overwhelming design and, and uh, draw documentation. Next. So um, since 2017, uh, Bartlett B Pro Research Cluster 9, which was previously led by Sumin Ham and Alvaro, and now currently taught by Alvaro and myself, and, and last year uh, together with Jose Pareja, um, has been developing the research into application of augmented realities in architecture, uh, both in processes design and uh, fabrication, as well as into direct feedback and collaboration between man and the machine through the use of these technologies. Um, RC9 focuses on hybrid approach to making, which is neither purely analog nor purely automated, proposing in a way alternative strategies for fabrication of digitally designed structures uh, through the use of cutting edge hand mounted devices to essentially holographically assist workers in the manufacturing and assembly of, of varying components using traditional craft techniques. Um, so making in, in mixed realities in a way reinvigorates the traditional craftsmanship by augmenting the hand and material skill with the precision and, and formal possibilities of digital modeling. And it in a way occupies this territory between purely automated and exclusively robotically driven fabrication uh, and highly crafted processes which require human labor. Uh, the projects which you see are uh, from a period of two years in which um, Alvaro and Sumin were teaching RC9 together. Um, next. And uh, while focusing on AR assisted fabrication, projects also looked into different modes of feedback through machine vision, for example, allowing for designers to uh, design themselves to be adjusted on the fly, where 
not only the human builders would follow the holographic instructions, but would also make changes to the design in real time, and the computer models would interact and readjust to the new conditions. Okay, so now we are going to see two case studies from the unit, the research press from 2019. They explore different uh, concepts that we were basically developing within the unit. The first project is diffusion, which is more about <clears throat> the capabilities for the augmented reality to enhance skills uh, directly, like in terms of adapting traditional, in this case, forging methods uh, into a more digital approach uh, and taking those uh, unskilled workers, in this case, the students, and through augmented reality, making them skill forgers. <laughs> in a way. Uh, so, uh, the design approach in this case was based on an agent-based uh, generative process that will generate different sets of uh, steel rods with different functions. And then, once every part was generated, a uh, experimental joinery system based on twisting them all together was uh, included to bind them all. Um, also, we, the students uh, included uh, an option to edit manually the design, but using augmented reality. So basically, the students could edit the design, the, the, the attractor design, by moving them around the space in or with augmented reality. Uh, here we can see the, the final prototype development. So once every section of the prototype was developed, in terms of uh, pipe, uh, pipes and rows, then all the joinery was uh, generated to connect them all and make the model stable, basically. Uh, for the manufacturing augmentation, we started with a very simple approach of uh, holographic projections to form rods. Uh, that was pretty successful. And then we uh, scaled this up into a more industrial uh, industrialized logic for, for manufacturing. In this case, uh, more as a, a closer to a traditional forging methods that were augmented. Uh, for example, uh, we augmented traditional uh, bending methods for, for steel pipes with analog tool, uh, with analog tool by using uh, holographic projections. But not only that, but also we thought that we could augment the actual tools. Uh, here we can see how uh, the actual tools they use, the ones that were, that were more complex and required skills to be used, were augmented and included into the holographic process with the uh, Hollands projection. That way they could achieve uh, the precise configuration for the machine to bend the rods in the right shape and form. So for the assembly, we also used uh, augmented reality. Obviously, all the parts were unique. So that means a very complex uh, collection of elements to, to be assembled. So we use a holographic projection that would identify and locate pieces in the model. Also, a frame was uh, lately added to create the final prototype, which was a two meters long prototype. So the whole form was integrated into the augmented reality as well. Here you can see the final prototype the students developed. And now we are gonna go for the second uh, case study. In this case is blockchain. Uh, for this project, it was based in a very simple friction-based assembly system, but the augmentation here was more directed towards machine learning and uh, computer vision for enhancing or improving the assembly process. So the system was super simple. Again, it was only friction based and was composed by ceramic blocks uh, and put traditional one inch stick, wood sticks. So basically they will interlock and generate the, the, the design. Uh, so for the generation, the students created a series of rules that will be run through a three-dimensional grid to generate uh, 
whatever design they wanted within a specific uh, uh, frame, basically. So the algorithm will read the frame and then will allocate uh, the play and boot components according to this grid and uh, several rules they uh, apply to the algorithm. Uh, here you can see an example of, of the generative process for a small prototype uh, for a, a office space that, that they were basically testing during the, the whole project development. Also, because of the complexity of, of the, of the uh, interlocking, uh, to be able to manufacture this, they also created uh, an augmented method for manufacturing. So we divided the blocks into different uh, categories. The one, that's one, two, three, and four, were the mass produced uh, pieces or components. So they could be easily casted in a mass produced system. And then the type five and six were the best bespoke components. For those components, we use a, a reconfigurable augmented casting system. So basically, the students developed this reconfigurable, reconfigurable mold that we could that could adapt all the different pieces or uh, bespoke components or unique components within a, a design, and then they can be casted in the same slick cast method. Uh, the idea is this uh, reconfigurable component would be also or could be also assembled by using augmented reality and holographic uh, projections. Here you can see some options for the catalog and different organizations for the pieces for the molding system. And here you can see all <laughs> the components then manufactured and ready to be assembled. Uh, also, to enhance the assembly process and to make sure everything is correctly assembled and, and to then analyze the possible error that, and, and fix it, uh, all the components were uh, assigned a series of patterns in order to be tracked uh, by computer vision. These patterns will uh, have two directions. One, to recognize the actual component in order to make sure the assembly is right. Uh, and also to read the position, the actual position for the block to ensure that the position was correct and therefore was stable. Uh, here we can see how this pattern was assigned to every different block and every different assembly will have a specific configuration based on those two characteristics. Uh, here you can see an example with the computer tracking and how it will read all the patterns and identify different pieces. And here we can see how these pieces were also tracked by a tracking camera system uh, that could read in a space uh, the position for every block, basically. Uh, also, we enhance the assembly by using machine learning in two ways. First, to optimize the amount of pieces uh, to have the cheapest possible assembly, and also to make sure that such an assembly was stable enough or was stable by itself by just using friction. The students develop a collision system for, for calculating the stability of the, of the design proposal. So here we can see like how the machine learning could give us different solutions with different optimizations. And also that would help to uh, have a reconfigurable system. So the idea is you can have uh, a predefined method, you can assemble it, and then if you need a different use for it, you could dismantle it and reassemble it using the same pieces. So the computer will recognize them all, identify them all, and give you the directions to dismantle and reassemble the model. Here we can see some prototypes that students develop uh, at at the end of the of the master's year, and uh, in conclusion, uh, basically we can see that augmented reality is still uh, a technology to be developed, but definitely shows the potential of being very useful in the future, especially to enhance our uh, unskilled workers or democratize the access uh, to skills in the, in, the, in the working on the building industry, basically, and also that can facilitate 
the connection between traditional craftsmanship and modern technology. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Igor uh, and Alvaro.